guys, it's Lawn Morris 14, and today, December 31st, um, day before New Year's, New Year's Eve, so wish everyone a happy New Year, because this will probably be my last video of 2011, if I get it up today, which I probably will, so I just want to show you what I've been doing on the Cub Cadet, it's an update on the Cub Cadet, so I got my parts in that I ordered for the uh, carb, uh, I needed a new float and a carb rebuild kit, all new gaskets and everything, except forgot to get a gasket where it bolts onto the motor but it looks like it's all right so I'm going to show you around then I'm also going to show you how to uh, get the carbs all cleaned up on these and what you might want to use to clean them out just my opinion on what I like to use to clean them out okay well here's the Cub Cadet got our little Kohler motor here I was working on it last night getting all electrical come on light turn on this is new light I got for Christmas it's an LED 60 lights on its head. And we've just been getting it all ready to go. Uh, I'm doing some rewiring on it. Uh, can someone tell me if this wire right here is positive? Um, the positive right here coming out of the coil, it was just running out, hanging, dangling there. So I think someone didn't hook it up right. And then for the on-off switch, this was going to that little light right there. And then the other, this wire right here that I'm holding right there was going all the way down to right here. And on my speed X, I don't uh, acknowledge that this was a cutoff. I'm pretty sure that this is going to cut it, but I could be wrong. So if any of you know what this wire right here, this red one that I'm following, could be going to, or what it's for, I'm pretty sure it's to kill the power to it. So that's what I think it is. And then because... These are where I normally run power to on them, and that's where it's headed, is up there. And this wire, someone just left it, not even hooked it up, it just ran like that. But the on-off switch was bad, so I gotta get a new one for it, and I gotta get a throttle. And for now, we'll just work the choke by hand, but I am gonna have to get a choke cable. But yeah, so I did that, and I did take the whole motor apart, I had a big rat's nest in it. Cleaned that all up, and I tried hooking the jump starters up to it and turning it over. All our generator did was hum. But I think it's just because I didn't have a good connection onto the wires. So I did that all, got it all ready to go. I took the flywheel off, had it all cleaned out. It was full of rat crap and everything. So that's pretty good to go there. Now all I need to do is get my carb rebuilt. I'll show you the parts. I ordered them off eBay. I'll tell you this. This makes me so happy. I got my new float and my carb rebuild kit off of eBay. First I just searched the model number. You can find the model number easily on the side of the shroud. This is a K161S series. And I mo typed in the model number and got my parts. Um, so what happened was I looked up these parts on Kohler's Genie Parts website. And here the parts are $20 for a float. Uh, screw that. I ain't paying that. So uh, is what I did was I took the part number, which you can see right there, and I copied it and pasted it and searched it on eBay and this and so did the other one I got them both for $11.95 half the price of what it was this these were both $20 a piece one was 18 I think uh, the float I think was 18 and this rebuild kit was 20 I mean come on if I can get it for half the price on eBay I'm doing that I only spent 28 bucks shipping was five dollars so I was trying to keep as less money into this Cub Cadet as I have because I don't want to put that much into it because I'm going to have a lot of money in the tires for it. So that's why I'm trying to keep the price this low. And I'm just glad I found them for half the price. I could have got them for a little cheaper, 8 bucks for a float, but I couldn't see a picture of it and who knows. So I'd rather have been able, this is what I've seen in the picture. Here's the carb. I just got done spraying some engine degreaser. If you're looking to clean a carb, you're going to want some engine degreaser. You're also going to want some of this carbon choke cleaner. It doesn't really matter what kind you get, really. They all do the same. Some of that, and that's all I mostly use. But I also have a little bucket that I put, since I didn't order new needle valves and stuff, I just put them all in there. My air screws, I just put them in there because I didn't want to buy new. They looked all right, so we're just letting them soak in some gas. So if you want to take your carb apart, your needle valves and stuff, let them soak in there. Let them clean up a little bit. If I had enough gas, I would dump this in there and let it soak too. I might do that. So, 
this car was pretty dirty, but I just got done spraying it down with some degreaser. And it'll foam, and it'll eat the dirt right off of it. So that's what you'll want to do. And if you are cleaning parts, like where the air screw goes in, right there, you'll want to give it a little squirt there. And a little squirt all over it. I mean, everywhere gas travels, you want air to get in. Like this little screw right there. And down into the carb. You want these little air holes all cleaned out and everything. You want this carb to be top-notch clean. This thing here, I'm letting it soak. I could have got a new one of them. That thing was like 30 bucks, I think. So I'm just going to let it soak because they have little holes on the side too. And they need and our little needle screw here. She looks pretty good now. It doesn't take that long for them to soak up. So did that. And... It's going to be good to go. I mean, this is how you clean a carb. If you don't want to put the money into it, mainly, all you need to do is clean the carb up real good. If you need a carb that ain't running good, just take it off and clean it up as good as you can. Then, uh, you want to, if you have the gas tank off, this gas tank's full of rust and stuff. i got to clean it out. My uh, gas bowl broke while I took it apart. It was so bad, so i got to get a new gas bowl for it. I might have one off of Speedex. And then... Run some of this stuff through it. Fuel injector and carburetor cleaner. It's for cars, but just dump some of this in a gas can. Or dump some of this into your tank. Never dump a whole bottle. That's way too much. And just dump a little bit in there. Not a whole bunch. I dump about a teaspoon or two teaspoons in there. Just enough to run a motor clean. It's not going to hurt your motor. Just don't do it every time. Um, I don't even do it every time in my truck. I run that stuff through maybe once a month. And that's about it. But that's it. So you want to clean the carb up like this. And now once it's done soaking, you take a rag and you wipe it all down. And look how good it looks. Shines like a champ. It's going to look like a brand new carb. I don't care if it's got paint on it or not. It will eat the paint off this engine degreaser. Because this cub has been repainted, I can tell. It's got two different paint colors on the hood. And... Then just let them parts soak for a while. You can see all the debris floating in the gas that came off of them. Then it is cleaning them up good. So if you want to clean your carb up like this, I recommend you do it like this. If you just don't want to spend the money on new parts. And you can't go wrong on new parts. But if you don't want to waste the money, just try cleaning them up and see what it does. It's not that hard to do. Just, this is the main thing. Remember how many turns out this was from inside of there. Um, I calculated mine as three turns, and if it's not perfect, it's okay, because once you get the carb on there and you fire the tractor up, you can always readjust it while it's running. That's what I do. So just do that, and you'll be all right. If you need any help, contact me or send me a message, because I'm pretty good with these kind of carbs. I'm, I don't like them, these style right there. I hate that style of carb. That's just a, a display one. I also have all these displays over here from a three and a half horse Briggs Classic. Oh, and by the way, I decided to fill my bowl up with gas all the way, enough to cover the carburetor. You don't have to do this, but since my carburetor is so dirty, I decided to soak the whole thing in gas. I mean, it's so gummed up. It's sitting outside forever, so since it's all gummed up, I decided I was just going to soak it in gas rather than just let it spray the greaser on and I'll do that once I'm done. And then you'll take the air compressor and blow out all the holes and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. And you can do it too. It's not going to hurt the carb to let it soak in gas. Just don't let it soak in there for ages. I mean, let it soak in there for a day or two. I mean, nothing longer than that. Don't even take that long, maybe an hour or something. So, I mean, that's all I'm going to do. And since my carb's bad, you can do that if it's not that bad. Just spray some carbon choke cleaner on it, wipe it out, and you're done. But if it's super bad, you're going to want to soak it. So that's another tip I have. So that's all I have for now. I just wanted to show you a few tips on how I clean carburetors. And I use engine degreaser and carbon choke cleaner. And I use a little bowl of gas to soak my parts in. You can use dirty gas too, but make sure there's no dirt and debris in it that's going to get stuck into the carburetor parts. And you'll be good to go. I would just use some clean gas. Just enough to cover the parts you're not going to waste that much and you can reuse it a couple of times so that's it and we're going to have this bad boy running here pretty soon in a couple of days i do got to get a 
throttle cable before I fire it up. I don't have one. So I was looking for one out in my parts, but I couldn't find one. So we'll get us one of them, and we'll attempt to fire it up. If it don't fire, the starter bad. We're going to have to find a starter or get it rebuilt somewhere along the line. So I'm just going to finish touching up this car, get it top notch where I want it. Like how I want it clean and everything and make sure my parts are all good and clean. And then we'll see if it runs. If it don't, I'll have to buy new needle valves and everything. So hopefully not. But if it runs good enough, it runs good enough. I just want to get it running. So I just wanted to show you them a couple of tips. And I will have a the next video, I will have it running. So uh, that's all I have for now. And I want to wish everyone a happy new year. And thanks for watching. And please subscribe.